A utopia is an imaginary community or society that possesses highly desirable or nearly perfect qualities for their citizens. There are many different varieties of utopias, depending on the different ideologies. The term was first coined by Sir Thomas More in his 1516 book titled Utopia, where he describes a fictional society off the coast of South America. Every religion needs its holy place, such as Mecca, Jerusalem, or Rome. In 1919, the supposed new utopia was built on an isolated hilltop above the Los Gatos Creek along the highway going to Santa Cruz, California. William Edward Riker, who was a former necktie salesman and palm reader, chose this location and named his utopia Holy City in 1919. Several years later, he would claim that he had a revelation in the hills above San Jose in 1906 which inspired his religious beliefs. As in which point, he took on the mantle of the Comforter. Holy City is the Comforter and the New Jerusalem. I'm your host, Max X Mordor, and this is Oddities, where I examine weird, strange, quirky, and morbid human history. Riker, who was rather late to the utopian movement, and many considered him to be a terrible candidate to be a cult leader. Born in Oakdale, California in 1873, Riker was a street hawker in San Francisco until he realized he has a skill in proselytizing, which is the act of attempting to convert someone from one religion, belief, or opinion to another. Edward Riker wasn't whiter than white though, Instead, he was a very manipulative man, a man who always spoke with a forked tongue. So basically, he was a fucking liar. The people he would recruit, financially struggling, partially educated, middle-aged Midwesterners who had found themselves in California as his disciples. The scheme worked. In 1920, he convinced a small group of his disciples and they moved to 674 Hayes Street in San Francisco, California, alongside Irvin Fisher and Anna Schramm. He founded Perfect Divine Way Inc. as the face of his new religious enterprise. In 1921, one of the group's earliest scandals happened when a member named Frida Schwartz was deprived of her eight kids after they were taken to, the, to, the, to be raised by the cult and her husband who was married off to two other women. She filed a complaint to the government and Riker was charged with grand larceny, which is a crime that involves the unlawful taking or theft of personal property of another person or business, as well as conspiracy against public morals and child endangerment. But all charges were dropped because four children were seized by the court and returned to their parents. Even before the group was founded, Riker was a known bigamist. Bigamy is when a person commits the crime of marrying another person who is still legally married to someone else. Further proving that Riker is vile and a vindictive man, he discovered that blind religious devotion would let him coerce sex from all his female disciples. Coercing is to persuade an unwilling person to do something by using force or threats. In 1920, Riker was found to have married seven women living at home in San Francisco and of course all of them were without their husbands. Wanting to have better control over his coverts and wishing to get out of the city, Riker gathered funds from all his disciples and bought 142 acres of land right above the Los Gatos Creek beginning in 1919. Even though he created a religion based on celibacy which is a state of abstaining from marriage and sexual relations. Temperance is abstinence from drinking alcohol. White supremacy and racism, no explanation needed for those. Due to what he bases religion off of, he knew that he wouldn't sell the cult well to the public. So he built a false front instead, a town that would revel in vice. At first glance, nothing really out of the ordinary 
The initial buildings in the holy city were pretty common buildings of any roadside town during the 1920s. That included an ice cream parlor, service station, restaurant, dance hall, and some other commercial buildings. Like any functional town, Holy City acquired a post office in 1927, in effect resurrecting the former post office that was in the nearby town of Patchen. Patchen is now a ghost town that is also located in unincorporated Santa Cruz, as well as going all out and building a tiny airport in order to draw more people. But that didn't sell the town, it just established it. Riker wanted to create a tourist trap and he did succeed. His soda fountain offered alcoholic carbonated beverages, which was very unusual for the time period. The town also featured peep show stereoscopic machines, which contradicted his doctrines on celibacy and separation of the sexes. This underlined his belief in the subservience of women under men. Subservience is the willingness to obey others unquestionably. Or trying to draw more families to holy city, the community supported a small zoo featured nine large Santa Claus statues along the road. It also had an observatory with a telescope where people could view the moon at night. But other features that really emphasize how odd the community really was, was when Riker ran a print shop in town, but rather than printing books, he focused more on pamphlets, brochures, propaganda newsletters, and large placards. Unsurprisingly, the pamphlets and brochures advertised, telling people to join the religious community while attacking the government and other religions. But the town was known for placards which were installed along the road to and through the town and extolled the merits of the perfect Christian divine way. The majority of them were anti-government, extremely sexist or blatantly white supremacist, and with some even showing distasteful depictions of intense rhetoric. Riker also owned the second licensed radio station in California beginning in 1929. Inappropriately given the letters KFQU, the station became well known for drifting from its assigned frequency which led to the station being permanently shut down in April 1931 for in irregularities from its inception. Holy City was built to capitalize on the state highway that passed through the middle of Linwood town. Highway in 1920. This was the only paved road between San Jose and Santa Cruz through the mountains. The town used the road to advertise itself and potentially attract disciples. Holy City never thrived as a religious community, not really surprised by that. Only about 30 people ascribed to Riker's beliefs, although another 250 people lived in the surrounding area and frequented the town regularly. His instance on celibacy or abortion when a member was found pregnant ensured that the cult would only live for so long. Throughout the 1930s, Riker became more and more delusional, insisting that he could cure cancer, heart disease, and several other common ailments. Apparently, he was often found walking the streets of Holy City with his dog, shouting at tourists and challenging them to theological arguments. By that point, Riker had lost all credibility, if he even had any, to begin with, and his town and cult were dead. Riker, as a white supremacist, didn't condemn the Nazi party and subscribed to some of their periodicals, which he used to reinforce his own doctrines. In 1942, soon after Germany declared war in the US, Riker openly declared himself on the Axis powers team and wrote to Hitler directly. He was soon arrested and tried for treason, the crime of betraying one's country, but was later acquitted. By this point, the railroad through the mountains had shut down and the opening of Highway 17 in 1940 totally bypassed Holy City. Most of the remaining cult members moved away at this time since the end of the Great Depression and the start of the war meant more jobs were in abundance. The town declined rapidly with its cultish allure and being deprived of its vital source of tourist traffic, the writing was obviously on the wall. Hoping to restore the community, Riker sold the land to a minor Hollywood producer Maurice Klein. 
in 1956, but this led to legal battles that led to the incorporation of Holy City in 1959 and its abandonment by the remaining Perfect Christian Divine Way Board the following year. Most of what was left of Holy City mysteriously burned down, maybe by the hands of Riker, or was just bulldozed over the following decade. Riker would convert to Catholicism and would later die three years later at Agni State Hospital in Santa Clara, California, which was a, which it used to be like an insane asylum back in the 20s or something like that, on December 3rd, 1969, at the reason age of 1996. In 1968, when developers bought Holy City, it was mostly populated with vagabond hippies and plans to convert the town into a campground but it never really materialized. For four decades, the place fell into decay until Grubb and Ellis purchased it in 2006, but the firm went bankrupt in 2012 and struggled to make any progress with the town. It was finally purchased in 2006 by Robert and Trish Duggan on the behalf of the Church of Idiots, uh, I mean Scientology? The less I say, the better, but its fate has yet to be determined. The only substantial structures remaining in Holy City from Riker's time are his large Victorian home, which is now a private home, and the old post office, which has served as the Holy City art glass shop for many years, but is now closed. Another feature from Riker's era, a stone fence wrapping around a redwood cathedral grove, allegedly served as a religious center of the cult, although details are rather scarce on that one. The thing I have noticed when researching different cults is a lot of the cults are more similar than you think, not in ideology, but in actions and personality. There are many reasons cults never work, and Holy City was just one of those examples of why. Leaders of cults always end up deluded. Like if you ever make rules and force them on people to follow them, you as a leader should too. You should lead by example. There is always a huge amount of of hypocrisy within cults like Riker he made people give up their worldly possessions and he was the one who drove a Cadillac so yeah and that's the reason why yeah Holy City only lasts like 10 years basically yeah so basically uh yeah if you're gonna be a cult leader yeah make sure you listen to the shit that you preach remember one thing guys practice what you preach Okay, guys, so this has been Oddities. And yeah, if you guys found this interesting, please leave anything in the comments. And yeah, this has been The Holy Spirit.